Hello nomads and nomads at heart. I'm Stevie Murdoch, the van life chef, teaching you to cook anything, anywhere. On today's episode of the van life chef, we're going to be cooking a Cornish game hen. I love roast chicken. And one of the things I miss out on a lot in the, living in the van are roasts. And I know a lot of folks who don't have ovens at home or the ovens are super inconsistent and complain about not getting to have the baked goods or the roast goods as well. So I wanted to make sure that we were able to get everything we want in our little spaces. The Cornish Game Hen is just a miniature little chicken. It's perfect for one person. Now, a lot of people think that chickens need to be roasted to perfection in order to be the nice and juiciest. And that is really convenient if you have an oven. One day I will upgrade to have a beautiful oven stove, but for right now, all I have is the power of a Dutch oven. So you can do this at home if your oven isn't very consistent powered, if you don't wanna to have to heat up a whole oven just for like one chicken or one cute little Cornish game hen. Uh, but the big thing to remember with this is that when you pick out what you're going to be cooking your hen in, you want to have a tight fitting lid. So you can do this at home with a cast iron or a aluminum, not the nonstick kind, no nonstick coating pan, but make sure it has a lid that fits on it tight so that it can create that convection style heat in there and really cook the, the hen or the chicken, even if you want to try chicken in there, evenly on all sides. Okay, nomads, let's hit that stove. For today's dish, we're going to use some type of citrus. I like to use either orange or lemon or lime. What we'll be needing for that is the zest, so the outside, uh, and a radial cut of the inside. So make sure that you zest before cutting, it's a lot easier. Um, and because we're going to be zesting it, make sure you wash your outside of your citrus fruits. I know a lot of people choose not to wash the outsides, but uh, think about all the grubby hands that have been on there and uh, children that have been licking the oranges in the grocery store. Don't do it. You also just need salt and pepper and any other aromatics that you choose. I'm keeping it simple today, so I have salt, pepper, a little bit of ground dried sage, and the citrus. First thing you do with any chicken you're going to roast or crunch game hen is just got to do a little uh, chicken calisthenics. Get that little chicken moving again, getting nice and loosened up. That's especially if it came in frozen. You want to just work all those kinks out. Take his little wings and tuck them behind his head just like he's lounging out. That prevents the little tips from burning too much. We'll keep them in there. And if you're gonna do this in the oven, you would get some butcher twine and truss this together. You could do that by just tying the two legs together or all the way around. With the Cornish game hens, there's not that much meat on there, so it's not super duper important. But one of the benefits about having a small pot to cook the hen in is that the sides of the pot will just hold that all in together for me and actually give it a better sear on the outside. So I'm not trussing him up. I'm just gonna get him in the lounging position and then start covering it in seasoning. And today I'm going to be using the orange. So take a zester. I just have a little miniature grater, uh, but you can get like a microplane or um, and some type of off-brand zester. Uh, it's important when you're zesting citrus, you don't wanna get into the pith. The pith is that white, stuff that's closest to the cells of the orange. You just want to get the bright colored outside of the skin. So let's try this out. With your spice mixture, you're now going to just evenly rub it all over the Cornish game hen and try to get some inside the skin area between the skin and the breast meat. We all also be using the orange to put a couple slices inside. So we'll do a radial, but cut them in half. Mm -hmm. 
that nice and evenly seasoned up here. And you know what they say, it's not about what you look like on the outside, it's about how you taste on the inside. So make sure you sprinkle some of that seasoning on the inside skin too. This will help get that flavor all saturated in that little hen. Get that seasoning into that under skin area. And then take the oranges, flat side towards the breastbone. That makes it easier to shove two slices in there. And now we have a bulging, delicious, deliciously seasoned hen. Get your pan going over medium high heat. You'll be using some type of oil, fat. Um, I'm using, I'm going to be using ghee. Uh, you can use extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil, whatever your little heart desires. Like I say, said before, I absolutely love ghee. Um, so we're just gonna add that to the pan, let it start getting hot. Once your oil is good and hot, we're gonna add the Cornish hen in, presentation side down. So that would be the breasts. You wanna make sure you're hearing that hen hit the, hit the oil. Let this bird cook for about two to three minutes on each side. What will happen is that the skin will naturally release from the pan, so it'll make it easier to release. If it feels like it's still sticking, it's not ready yet, don't turn it. four sides so make sure that you get his little sides as well. Look at that beautiful color. After about two or three minutes you'll add in between a quarter and a half a cup of stock. You want it to cover the bottom of the pan and then cover the hen and let it cook the waiting game of waiting for meat to cook. Now, Cornish game hens are a lot smaller than most meats, so it happens quite quickly. The 160 degree thigh will probably happen within five to 10 minutes, depending on um, how long you sear it on all sides. At this point, you should be finishing up your side dishes if you chose to do any. I like to serve Cornish game hens with Southern style uh, white beans and a little bit of kale or some type of hearty green, collards maybe. I think it's super duper tasty, but you can also just do a side of rice or potato pancakes, whatever you'd like. I will definitely post a video later of the sides that I like to do. Um, but today I'm just doing the Cornish game hen, so I'm letting it simmer in that pot. And I will take it to one extra bonus level today, actually. I'm thinking I'm gonna make a nice little sauce for this. So let's check our Cornish game hen and see how it's doing. Woo! Look at that beaut. Now some of you guys might be thinking, why did we crisp that skin just to have it be all tenderized and steaming in a pot? Well, it's important to get that skin nice and crispy and colored because that's all that delicious flavor. Look at all that. Mmm. Mmm. Flavor. Flavor! This cute little chickadee is ready to come out. We're going to put it on a plate to let it rest while we make a little au jus. This is the liquid that is remaining in the bottom of your pot after you take the hen out. So what we're going to do with this to make a little au jus is add some more stock. Bring up that heat and let it reduce. If you are somebody who likes to eat garlic and onions at this point, you're more than welcome to add a few cloves of garlic. Nice, finely chopped or minced, depending you on know what texture you want. We're gonna let this reduce by half, so about the same amount of liquid that we had when we first added it to the pan. With our remaining pan 
drippings and the stock deliciously reduced. We're going to turn off the heat. Look how thick and delicious that looks. And the important part here is to actually take it off the heat. So there's always that residual heat that's on the burner. If we take it off the heat, it will allow it to stop cooking. We don't want any extra heat for this next step. We're going to add about a tablespoon and a half of butter and a little bit of fresh herbs to make our au jus. Add your butter to the pan. I'm using ghee because I like the taste of it and I can't actually do real butter, but I highly recommend using real butter in this step because it's super delicious. And if you're using a skillet with a longer handle, it's more fun to swirl it in by hand. Since I don't have that, I'm going to use the whisk. You can see this beautiful sheen on the pot here. Let me get you closer. Mmm, delicious. And at this point, you can add your fresh herbs. And I have forgotten mine, which is fine, because it is just tasty with this. We want to continuously mix in that fat to the jus. We don't want it to look all weird and separated, so it's important to keep that moving. Now let's plate up our little chicken meat. You can also add some type of starch here, maybe some broccoli raw vegetables over the top. Then what we're going to do is use a little spoon to sauce the chicken breast. Mmm, that smells ridiculously good. And there you have it, nomads. One delicious serving of Cornish game hen. I sure enjoyed cooking with you folks today. I hope that you enjoy your Cornish game hen. I know I'm going to because it smells freaking delicious. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Stevie the Van Life Chef. Hit that like button, and if you want to see the accoutrements that go along with the Cornish Game Hen for Thanksgiving or any just everyday dish, please comment below. Remember, I'm Stevie the Van Life Chef, dropping a new recipe on your ass each week, teaching you to cook anything, anywhere.